If there's one man uh, back home in India, the Indian IT services industry, they say, has a complete grasp of the changing technology revolution uh, which is uh, sweeping the Indian IT services industry, they say it's uh, Vishal Sikka. It's a pleasure to have Vishal Sikka, CEO at Infosys Limited, with me here. Mr. Sikka, thank you very much. Thank you. It's a real pleasure. Real pleasure. Uh, first up, since we're here in Davos, I'd just like to get a feel from you. You've been at the Infosys, in a way, adda here, meeting all these people. Uh, what's, what's the mood like? What's the feel like for India first and for the industry? Uh, well, first of all, welcome to our Adda. It's a great way to say it. Uh, our little campus here that we have put together, uh, as you can see, it's a beautiful space, big space, right as you enter Davos. And everybody that I meet tells me that how, how proud they are. All the Indians, uh, you know, who are here in Davos, they feel proud of the, this beautiful uh, campus that we have put together here. And everybody else has noticed it. So, so that has been very exciting. I think that um, generally there is a sense of gloom, uh, there is a sense of uh, concern uh, uh, broadly. However, when it comes to India, the phrases that I have heard people use is the uh, single shining spot, the one uh, sort of one uh, bright spot, bright I mean, spot yeah. and, and a ray of hope, this type of a thing. So that is very good. I, I think that... Uh, uh, people look at uh, the growth in India and the confidence and, and there is a sense of, uh, there is a lot of hope that is being built around the fact that India will somehow buck the trend around what is going on globally and so forth. So that is very positive uh, from our point of view, obviously. And then from an IT services perspective, again, it is a tale of two cities. There is uh, the traditional IT companies that are facing the same disruption that everybody else in the world is. Yes. And, and there is a sense of, uh, of anxiety there. But at the same time, there is a tremendous sense of optimism around, because the great disruption that is happening in the world around us is a technological disruption. It is a IT-led disruption. It's, it's ironic that the big IT companies are, are not the ones disrupted. leading it. Yeah. But so, you know, from our point of view, I see this as a tremendous opportunity. There is obviously the same threat applies to us as well in a very, very, um, in a very strong way. However, I look at it as a tremendous opportunity because we can be the great services company that can be the enabler yeah. of the great change that is ahead of us. Uh, it can be the great accelerator and the great amplifier of people's abilities. And uh, if you just look around our campus here, you know, here we have this massive screen um, with 4K resolution where we have our Mysore campus 360 uh, flying big, around. Big, tr big training facility. And that's our, uh, that's our yeah, center, our spiritual center of our company that is... Uh, the Narayan Murthy campus on education. Look, there is the GEC building, our big university building. Uh, we have done a lot of interesting work on virtual reality together with Carnegie Mellon. You know, for, for lay viewers, I, wanna, I want you to describe it, break it down. When we say dig digital disruption, what exactly do we mean? I Indian IT services industry uh, for the lay person is still, you know, he still goes back to coding, application maintenance, development. That is still bread and butter, right? 90% yeah. of the revenues of Indian IT services companies is that. ADM. So the broadly, I mean, the word digital is a very um, abused, often abused word. Um, the, what, I think what it is, what it refers to, I go back to Nicholas Nagarabonte's book uh, 20 years ago called Being Digital, where he talked about the fact that atoms are turning into bits, that more and more of the physical structures around us are being replaced by software-based structures. So in the networking world, for example, there was software-defined networking. Or we have example after example of physical things, containers that have disappeared yeah. inside smartphones. How are the Indian IT services so, getting disrupted? So I mean, in, in that context. Just as, so Mark Anderson calls it, software is eating the world. And software is also eating the IT services industry. It is taking out bigger and bigger bites out of work that was happening mechanically, manually. Can you give me an example? I mean, I, IT administration, for example, infrastructure, what we call infrastructure management, those kinds of jobs are even in business process operations, a lot of the support and service desk oriented functions, these kinds of things are all becoming, it, it is becoming possible to use AI techniques to replace these things with automation. The, the same phenomenon that, you know, when Nandan talked about uh, with Thomas Friedman, the world is flat, that phenomenon that brought these jobs to India to begin with is now, even at a bigger scale, is happening with automation. Um, so more and more of the mechanizable, manual uh, labor-oriented tasks are becoming possible to be done automatically. Okay. And my view is that this is obviously a very, very big threat to the industry. However, it is also a tremendous opportunity for us to 
transcend that to become creators of automation. We have a robot here in the back yes. built by our I'm going to shoot that. But oh. if 90% of the revenues, roughly, of Indian IT services companies is still uh, the, the uh, sort of, you know, application maintenance development type of work, uh, are companies lagging behind this entire uh, revolution, disruption, and way behind? Should it, it, is, it is. So, application development, certainly there is, is still, there is a ways before systems can write applications on their own. Right. We are still quite far from that. Application maintenance is still also, for the foreseeable future, going to be largely a manual work. Okay. However, parts of application maintenance, L3 support, L2 support, and certainly L1 support, are all already possible to be, to be automated. Um, many other parts, like business BPO-oriented tasks, can be automated. So, okay. Bigger and bigger But have you seen of, that in BPO? I mean, oh, yeah. Have you, yeah, absolutely. So, if you look at our own So, you don't need thousands of people, essentially, for, for running um, the BPO center, to put it simply. I mean, it could be... We are... The, um, uh, if you look at our Q3 performance, we were able to save, uh, within the traditional delivery organization, about 1,100 people worth of work through automation. In BPO alone, not including these 1,100, uh, was around 650 or so people just in BPO. So, um, however, the, the thing that you have to see is that the people that we displace because of automation can go on to more value adding, more creativity requiring kinds of jobs. And so it is not a zero sum thing. Uh, people tend to think of, you know, automation and these things as creating a zero sum effect on on jobs. But it's also obviously not everybody wins kind of game, right? I mean, there will, uh, will be losses in terms of uh, employment opportunities, for example, the hiring that IT services have been doing, I mean, that has to go down. Would you agree with all of that? I think that in absolute numbers, it won't, uh, but in relative numbers, I mean, as a percentage is, it might. Okay. Uh, but that is what has happened. I mean, if you look at when I was a child growing up shortly after the Bangladesh war, um, there was a huge shortage of food, even though 77, 78 percent of the country was in agriculture. Now we have a much smaller percentage of people in agriculture and, and we are one of the largest exporters of food. Forget the food sufficiency within the country itself. So a similar kind of thing happens. Technology amplifies people and this is the reason we are particularly concerned this time around is because this technology is displacing white collar knowledge kinds of work. But, but if you look at it as a continuum, this has been going on since the industrial revolution and, and it is it's going to continue. But people, there is no limit to human creativity. So yeah, temporarily there would be a retraining and skilling. So, so the root of the solution is education. We have to find, and that is why the Mysore campus is our center, uh, that you have to find it within us to educate people with the skills of tomorrow. And that is the, again, we have to rethink education there, because typically our educational machinery yeah. teaches people to think of the world. But is it possible to do it in such large numbers? Of I mean, to, to retrain, to... Reskill because that's what we're talking about. If you look at our own experience, um, in uh, on my very first night as CEO, I went to Mysore, and uh, I asked one of our leaders, "How long does it take us to put together a new training program?" And he said, "90 days." So, in October of that year, 2014, we established the design thinking training. Three of the faculty from Stanford's D School went to Mysore and spent some time there with our teachers, taught them design thinking taught a few classes themselves so that the teachers got up to speed hands-on. And in that, now in the last 14 months, we have trained 71,000 people mm -hmm. on design thinking. Okay. This is not watching a video on YouTube or something like that. This is immersive design uh, education, going through building prototypes and things like that. 71,000 people, 71,000 people, it's not that they are all designers now. But 71,000 people are able to ask questions. They are able to think creatively, to, to think innovatively. And this is the root of the zero distance work that we do to bring innovation to every project. So I, my own belief is, a deeply rooted belief is, that there is no limit to human creativity and ingenuity, that we can teach people how to be innovative. And the, what we save because of automation, we, we put back into creativity and innovation. If we are able to execute successfully on this, this is easier said than done, obviously. But this is, to me, the recipe for how we will... Get what parts of the business, say, for example, at Infosys, is, is changing the most in, in this sense, in that direction? Oh, every, every part is going through a fundamental change. Uh, if you look at uh, infrastructure management, for example, this is the biggest beneficiary of automation. Okay. Uh, therefore, you can also conclude it is the biggest, most susceptible to automation. 
Um, if you look at application maintenance work, L2 support, um, even L3 support, uh, this has um, flavors of automation, BPO for sure. sure. Then if you look at um, um, in other areas, product engineering, business intelligence, application development, here different kinds of automation can be brought in, like DevOps, like a better developer's experience, integrated tooling, which saves the time from mundane things. So it is all in the end about improving the productivity of the people. You know, Professor Mashelkar used to say this, uh, doing more with less for more. That's what we are doing. For India, what does that mean? I mean, we, we uh, I mean, a million people enter the workforce every month. And if you're talking about more productivity, I mean, what's the net benefit or hit to, I mean, as a society, what does it mean? I think that it is a tremendous opportunity for India. I, I, I don't, you know, when people talk about the fact that these jobs will go away and so forth, that is a very narrow view of, of the problem. The jobs will be there. The, um, the fact that a million people come into the workforce is a tremendous opportunity for us. If you just look around at the world around us, the physical manufacturing oriented industries and economies are suffering. But we are not in that world anyway. We are in the world of, of writing software, of knowledge work. These are, this is what the world of tomorrow is looking for. We are about entrepreneurship. This is what the world of tomorrow is looking for. So my sense is that if we create access, if we create education, and if we inspire people to be innovative, to be entrepreneurial, the future will for sure... It's a big if, right? It is a big are we if. doing it fast enough? That's the question, right? Uh, well, we at Infosys are in a race. We are trying to get this done as fast as we can. But I, and I think that the Prime Minister feels a very tremendous sense of urgency there as well. Uh, so I think whether or not we were fast enough is something that we will only conclude looking backwards when we are yeah. you know, a long way from now. But I think that the best is ahead of us. I am absolutely convinced of that. Just to go back to the impact of automation on Indian IT services companies, uh, what would it do for, in terms of value-wise, I mean, revenues, etc.? Does that also take a hit? Because what you build to clients also uh, t t takes a hit. One yeah, but if we improve the productivity correspondingly, then we can do more of those projects. So if the particular, if the cost of one project comes down, then the burden is to make sure that the number of people in the project has come down further than the cost has come down, and we replace that with automation so that the margin doesn't suffer. And, and whatever we say from, from a bandwidth point of view, we do more projects with that. So earlier, if you needed 40 people to do a project, now you do it with 25 plus software so that your margin doesn't suffer and the remaining 15 people that you saved can do an additional project. So I, I don't see it as a net reduction. I see it as an opportunity. Hmm. What, what, what is the time period that you would put that, uh, I mean, that's the time that... It has already started. Have, right. It has already started the first results. I mean, I mentioned 1,100 people Total 1,800 or uh, so. I mean, you said 600... Q2 and... Uh, yeah, yeah. Including VPO, 1,700 or so, 1,800. Um, in Q2, it was 1,000 total, including VPO. So, the number is going up, which is a good thing. And this quarter, uh, we are on track to do even so more. So, these are the number of people that you... Uh, that we have freed, that we have saved as a result of, of automation. Okay. And then, therefore, they are able to work on... Can you give me some uh, uh, guidance on this? I mean... How, how do you see this no, progressing? No, I mean, the aspiration that I have set is to go take the RPE, the revenue per employee, from roughly 50,000 now to 80,000 in 2020. Uh -huh. uh, so that is what we are aspiring for. But otherwise, it is, in these early days, it is difficult to tell when these things will kick in and so on. But I think that in FY18, the one year from now, for sure you will see the result of automation in a very meaningful way. I think in the next couple, three quarters, you will start to see the results in become more visible. Mm -hmm. But 1,100 people is about 1% 1 of our workforce. So it is right now, it just gets buried inside the productivity. But it could pick up dramatically, right? It will I mean, pick the up. pace could pick up it, it very, very up. fast. It, it will pick up. What's, what's the feedback from uh, uh, clients here in Davos? I'm sure you met many They love it. Clients. They love the focus on innovation. They are all looking for how, what the future of their industry is, the future of are their Are they very clear about what the future, I mean, is in terms of... They're looking of, for advice. Uh -huh. They're looking for guidance. They're looking for, you know, so they're looking to solve a dual challenge of simplifying their existing business and their existing landscape and in parallel getting into new areas. Uh, and so they're looking for help on both those fronts. Uh -huh. For Infosys, uh, should we expect, I mean, uh, repeat performances, the last quarter numbers, especially <laughs> put in comparison with your peers, I mean, look very good. Should, what should we expect? Well, look, we are still early in this journey of transformation through automation and innovation. Um, the... Uh, we feel good about what the... But you believe this is going to be the differentiator? This will, this is for sure the differentiator. Okay. There is no doubt in my mind. Mm -hmm. 
Um, however, you know, within a given quarter, all kinds of other factors apply. And so when you're sitting in Davos, you don't want to think about the quarter. Absolutely. But um, we did uh, raise the guidance for this financial year to 12.8 to 13.2 in constant currency, mm -hmm. which is significant because now the lower end of the guidance is above the high end of the previous guidance. And this is because of what we see happening. And hopefully, you know, our hope is that uh, that sets us up for a um, getting to industry leading growth in the next financial year as we have maintained. So, look forward. Mr. Sikha, thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. And, uh, have a great time here in Davos. Thank you. Thank you.